I'm really pleased to welcome Ford Pro CEO Ted Canis. And Ted, wonderful to have you in the studio. And just answer that first. We've got to go micro into the detail of your business. But the macro picture today, when GDP isn't as strong as expected, when jobs perhaps are not growing at quite the anticipated ma- amount that we had seen, are people wanting to update, electrify, invest in their businesses? Absolutely. What we're seeing, Caroline, is what we said a second quarter is there is still three years of pent-up demand Mm. for the vehicles, internal combustion and battery electric, doing all that supply chain problems that we had. And so we see customers for super duties and transits, both North America and Europe, looking for vehicles. My biggest challenge with most of my customers, hey customers, is can I get more? Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're all trying to marry up the supply-demand equation at the moment. I'm interested in, into ultimately, therefore, how you're setting yourself apart. What is it that makes them go, yes, for pro over anything else? Well, so we have this amazing backbone of the business that we have. All these commercial work trucks that we do for North America and Europe. We're number one in Europe for eight years in a row. We have 40% of the commercial and government share for full-size trucks and vans. We're the big guy. And what we're doing now is expanding in not just vehicles, In a connected world, it's vehicles, software, service, charging, financing, netting that all together so that we have this amazing business, a one-stop shop for our customers, just the easy button. Hey, Ted, it's good to catch up. You know, I I actually find the commercial business fascinating because you're not just selling a, a vehicle that happens to be electric. You're kind of packaging it up. You mentioned your footprint in Europe. I just wondered if you had a better sense now of why that EV adoption is slower here in the US vis-a-vis Europe and indeed China. Well, Ed, when you and I were first talking electric vehicles years ago and we were getting ready to do the Lightning and other products that we weren't even had launched at the time, you know, America was a bit further behind. Cost of fuel in Europe was very high and there was already a lot of pressure to look for other solutions. And what we're seeing now, and actually in both regions, is it's just good business. Total cost of ownership, uptime, productivity solutions. They can save money on fuel, they can save money on repairs. It's a, it's a great solution for many customers in both regions. And that's what we're seeing. And that's why we upped a lot of our production demand for Lightning here in North America. And it's getting the right tool for the job, whether that's a van or a pickup truck to do the work. Jim Farley, the, the Ford CEO, has talked about the consumer, uh, you know, sort of rejecting higher prices for EVs. Do you see that from your commercial and fleet customers as well on the pricing issue? I'd say we're, we will carefully manage the pricing as we inc- increase the uh, supply of vehicles now that we're going to the extra shifts that we put on and Lightning and have the battery capacity. So a lot of it is just education. I think in the commercial space, the decision process is longer in a company. This is a big investment, like in facilities or equipment. They're used to making investments, with re- making the equations, getting the Excel spreadsheet out. And that learning process is taking longer. And then you would stack on applying for incentives, utility infrastructure, that's required. This turns into a longer process uh, that moves through the cycle. And that's what we're helping a lot of our customers and frankly our dealers as they work with so many new customers. You know, I've been out in some, uh, some vineyards and wineries very near to where I am now, Ted, and they demonstrated to me not just that they run the F-150 Lightning between point A and point B, but they're, they're using your data and software offering to kind of optimize that route, everything from like getting down to the most efficient mile they can drive. Peter Stearns just joined Ford, longtime Apple exec. I just wondered if you could tell us why that move came and, and what kind of impact he will have on improving that software offering. I think uh, the, the, this is core to the whole Ford Plus plan. I think we're all talking about electrification on all the time, but the real secret is the software-defined vehicles and connected vehicles, digital and physical services. That is the big change. So when you have a vehicle that's signaling uh, a repair that needs to be made, you can pre-order the part, schedule at the dealership, link all that together like you're seeing so many cases where software can provide more convenient, more productive solutions for the customers. Peter is a specialist in that space. He's been doing subscription services at large volume at Apple with that kind of science that he's seen of where and how to change the experience for the customers in a very positive way. And he's going to come lend us that experience both on the pro side, but in our other software-defined businesses, for example, Blue Cruise, where you can have hands-free driving on the highways in the Blue Cruise zones, which also in the future will be appealing to commercial customers. Imagine a customer who can get his time back on the highway. Time 
is just a huge value. Or you're in traffic coming on in the London on N25 and you're stuck in those miles and miles of queues. It's a great thing to not have to be hand the hands of the wheel. You could do something else. You know a couple of people you're talking to who understand the M25 trials and tribulations. I'm interested in though, you talked about the supply demand dynamic, the fact that sort of made your headache is getting enough vehicles into your clients' hands. How much more of a headache is that when you're still trying to negotiate with workers, particularly with the United Auto Workers? I mean, how is that going to your bit of the business? Well, I think the main thing for us is, you know, the workers are our team. We're all one team. And, uh, you know, one of the things we're proud of is we build more vehicles in America than anybody else. We employ more hourly guys in than anybody else. We export more than anybody else. So it's a team that's doing these. And we're happy to produce all these F-Series vans and pickups in the U.S. So when we look at that, when it's, it's going to go through that process now. It, this is a normal negotiation. I'm not in the heads and throws. But I can say I was in Kansas City this week uh, visiting our team there because we'd just gone to three shifts on transit earlier this year because the demand is so strong. For Pro CEO Ted Canis, we always talk about EVs in the context of the consumer, and we, we don't talk as much about these small and large businesses buying up fleets. Thank you so much for your time.